War, Love, Meow, by Dr. Dylan Doe, Chapter 1. Five minutes to launch, two and the three other crew members laid on their backs, strapped into their seats, uncomfortably close to one another. Her back strained in an uneven position thanks to the lumpy parachute stuffed behind her. She stared at the rows of multiple colored buttons and switches on the panels at the other end of the central chamber. This is it. Space. Europa. My theories. All we've trained for. The crew exuded excitement. Two glanced toward the muscular frame of the man who crowded into her from the right. Captain Jake. What a pleasant man. So nice of him to buy me all those lovely dinners. I hope the mission distracts from his divorce. Light pressure pushed against her left side. She glanced left. I can't believe I'm going to space with my twin. He better not screw this up for me. Two readjusted her back so the lumpy suit would pressure different parts of her body. I hope Sir Meowstead doesn't give Mom too much trouble. He's a good kitty. He should be okay. Two would have never bought a pet two years ago if she knew she'd get this opportunity. At 24, NASA could have chosen plenty of more experienced biologists. I earned this. She'd done nothing but study biology her whole life and was the best damn biologist willing to be blasted into space. The countdown blared from the loudspeaker. Images of her mother, her kitty, and her home scrolled through her mind. The engines lit up and the craft rumbled. Two closed her eyes. Exploding fuel roared behind her. She struggled to breathe against the G's pushing on her chest. As she soared into the greatest altitudes of her life, she felt calm and confident, knowing her own career rocketed to new heights as well. Suddenly, the rumbling ceased, and Two's body lifted against her straps and harness. The spacecraft speakers meowed a chime, informing the four-man crew that they had safely exited Earth's atmosphere. Jake and Cooper unstrapped themselves and floated over to the panels. Captain Jake said, Coops, check the course for Europa. Yes, sir. Viet and Two dawdled a moment in their seats. Two stared blankly ahead. Viet lifted his head, eyeing the other men. He whispered, Sis, we could be much worse off than spending years in tight quarters with these nice hindquarters. Two gave Viet a dismissive face. Her twin's flamboyant attitude annoyed the dickens out of her. Only heaven knew how Natsa had not already fired him for sexual harassment. Viet's point was correct, though. The two men assigned to the mission with the twins could have come from central casting for Hunk 1 and Hunk 2. She resisted the temptation to let herself be distracted by the muscular captain bent over in front of her. The hard muscles of his fit body penetrated through his uniform. Oh, if I didn't love my job so much, I'd spend more time searching for a man. A nice professional like Jake would suit me well. Captain Jake turned. Two, I need the biological specimen security double-checked before we thrust onward. What? Two and Jake stared at each other for a brief moment. Two realized she gazed blankly at the captain's gorgeous but stern face. Sorry, I'll check their security right away. She unstrapped herself, smiling slightly as her arms, legs, and entire body freely floated. She pulled on bars, propelling her body through a tight hallway toward the lab. It's one thing for Viet to distract himself, but he shouldn't distract me as well. And how could I let him do it? On the most important mission of my life, I daydream about men. Two entered her lab and pressed against a titanium shelf to stop her momentum. Calm down, Two. You were able to hide your men hang up during vetting and training. You can do it now. The next morning, Two awoke abruptly. She glanced around, confused, until the fog of sleep cleared from her mind. She unstrapped herself from the mattress. She searched the white walls of her capsule for the slot holding her food pouches. Her fingers gingerly curled around a flexible package labeled eggs and bacon mash, taking care that it didn't escape into the gravity-free air. She took her breakfast into the central chamber where her two unrelated colleagues attentively worked, and Viet gazed out a small window at the scattered lights of space. Two strapped herself into the seat next to her twin brother. Beautiful, isn't it, Viet? Girl, mm-hmm, gorgeous. Viet had not always spoken so ludicrously. He started at the age of 17, and Two was sure he'd quit in a week. However, Fiat stuck with his asinine speech, and now it was a part of him, to Two's dismay. Fiat turned to Two. This mission is the most amazing thing to ever happen to me, and it is doubly fabulous to hurtle through the stars with you, my twin sister girl. The comment surprised and warmed Two. She smiled earnestly, but responded playfully. Have no fears, little brother. 
I'll take care of you up here in scary space. I love you. She gave him a hug. He whispered in her ear, Thanks, twin sister. Captain Jake approached them. Two, Viet, time for a briefing. Yes, Captain, Viet and Two replied in tandem. Two sealed her half-eaten breakfast and shoved it in a pocket. They floated over next to astrophysicist Cooper, and the three of them looked to Jake. He stared directly into Two's eyes as he began to speak. Why is he looking at me? Biologists win. NASA values your important work studying the survivability of biological specimens in Europa's atmosphere, and this will go forward. However, however, I have not previously revealed the primary goal of this mission due to its sensitive nature. He paused, looking at each of the three crew members in the eyes, one by one. NASA astronomers have detected some kind of mini black hole orbiting Jupiter. Cooper leaned forward with his mouth gaping open. Incredible. Jake turned to the astrophysicist. Coops, your previous mission was a cover. Your true purpose is to study this phenomenon. A gorgeous smile emanating from Cooper's face. My pleasure, sir. His glistening eyes were wide with excitement. Start reading through the NASA directive at your terminal. Jake turned to Viet and Two, adding, as you were. Viet and Cooper floated away. Jake stared at Two. She met his eyes. Can I help you, Captain? He smiled softly. Two hated herself for letting her thoughts focus on his luxurious, shiny brown hair that complimented his perfect smile as if a prodigy artist had designed his face. The Captain continued gazing at Two, his eyes the color of a midday sky. Look, Two. He dropped his gaze as he placed a hand on her shoulder. His hand felt so strong, so warm, so manly. He brought his eyes back to hers. I know we deceived you about the primary goal of this mission, and this means you will only play a secondary role. I'm sorry for how this may make you feel. Oh God, he's so sentimental. Butterflies rampaged into his stomach. But this comes from the top. The Pentagon has taken a keen interest in potential uses from this object, and they take no chances when it comes to secrecy. Oh, Captain, thank you. Don't worry, I understand. Thank you for understanding. His mouth opened into a small, compassionate smile before he floated off. Two paused for a moment. Wait, I'm not thankful. Do they not trust me? They should have told me this before I even started training. Why did I let him brush me off like that? I should have given him a piece of my mind. She shook her head as she floated toward the lab, upset that she was so taken in by the man. If only she had more time for men in her life, she would not be so vulnerable to such distractions. Her gut should boil with rage for his deception and the devaluing of her years of work in preparation for this mission. But instead, she fawned over him like a nervous schoolgirl. Fiat floated in behind her. Hey, hey, hey. Looks like Captain has taken a liking to his crew member. Seems like Cappy wants to make some happy time with my twin sister. God, my brother is an idiot. Quiet, little brother. They can hear you. Two crossed her arms over her chest. And that is so not true. Guys are not interested in me. I'm just a boring biologist. Oh, Twinny Poo, too. You are in such denial. Shush, Viet. How's that engine you designed running? NASA raves about your once-in-a-generation engineering skills. Don't you have work to do? Viet smiled slyly. I mainly just check gauges and read bar graphs, unless something goes wrong. One morning... Two pulled herself toward the captain's quarters for a scheduled one-on-one -on -one meeting. For the past month of the year-long trip to Jupiter, the crew performed their duties uneventfully. Astrophysicist Cooper reveled in his tasks. He targeted the dark object with sensors and seemingly ran tests 24-7. Two never saw him sleep. Captain Jake always found time throughout the day to talk with Two, but he never presented himself as anything more than a friendly colleague just like when they were out for wine and dinner during training. Suddenly, something grabbed Two's ankle, jerking her to a halt. She screamed. She looked back to see Viet's hand wrapped around her ankle. Two noticed something flash in his eyes, sadistic exhilaration, like he took pleasure in his temporary control over her body. Viet released her and laughed like a girl. Through his laughter, he wore an uncontrollably large grin, as if he had performed the most enjoyable action possible. What is wrong with you? Mom didn't beat you enough, Fiat. Oh, Twenty Two, I just wanted to wish you fun times with the captain tonight. I saw him busting out the champagne. Whatever. If you grab me like that again in a professional setting, I will tear the eyes out of your sockets, baby brother. Two's anger blew Viet back physically as he jerked away. They stared at each other for a few long seconds before Two turned away. 
She felt like the stress of this trip was getting to her. She loved her brother, but selecting them both for this mission was a mistake. When she arrived at the captain's door, it opened into the wall's recess as if he had known she was there. She pulled herself in and instinctively tapped the closed door button. Jake floated at the front of his quarters. The captain gazed at two with sincere concern in his eyes. How cute. Are you alright? I heard a commotion. Sibling rivalry won't cause disorder on my craft, will it? No, no. I have it under control, Captain. The captain propelled himself forward and hugged her. She fell into his embrace and squeezed back. He feels so good, Two thought as he wrapped her in his toned sure arms and his musky cologne. Oh my god, he's wearing cologne. What's going on? She pulled away. His dreamy blue eyes pierced through her with desire. Jake, no. It's too soon. Aren't we supposed to date first? A tiny part of her screamed, It's not too soon, you fool. Let him have you. Jake caressed her shoulder and moved his luscious lips. Two, we dated throughout training. I know we kept it casual, but I can't see you every day on my ship without wanting you. I long for your touch. I yearn for your heart. I need to love you. He eyed her up and down. Now. He leaned toward her with his mouth partially open. She grabbed him and pulled his head beside hers. They embraced. His strong hand massaged her back. Oh my god. Jake, what would Houston say? He brushed his lips against her ear. Damn, Houston. Two closed her eyes. He's so bad. A rush of desire flooded out her gut and swelled her chest. Unthinkingly, she kissed him on the cheek. They both turned their heads for a full-on kiss as their bodies slowly twirled together. Two thought of nothing but his lips embracing her own. The risks, the unprofessionalism, and the future jeering of her brother were gone from her mind. She needed this moment for so long. She worked so hard to advance her career, but it was time to fulfill her desires as a woman. She earned this. She deserved a man. Two closed her eyes and her entire body reached out for his as their lips inched closer. Then, a sudden jolt in the ship violently jerked them apart. Screams of panic from their shipmates filtered through the closed door. The captain flew through the craft to see the problem. Two followed him into the control room. She glanced at the speedometer. They were traveling at an increased speed. The captain yelled, What's wrong? Cooper's fingers dashed along the keyboard, his voice frantic. I was running a test with the gamma sensors and a burst of light emitted from the mini black hole. And then it started sucking us in. Sucking us in? Yes, sir. The total gravity pull of the object is the same. It's not pulling other objects toward it. Only us. Somehow I initiated an intensified gravimetric surge with my gamma test. Maybe I can release us. Captain, we must charge the photon-reducing cannon. Two, Theot, and the captain flew into action, pressing buttons and initiating programs to charge the cannon. Cooper typed furiously at his terminal. Jupiter became larger and larger on the forward screen. Cooper yelled, I need it charged now! Just another second, the captain replied. It's done, Viet yelled as he turned from a bar on a screen that pulsed red in its entirety. Hurry up, Cooper! We impact in 12 seconds! Sweat running down his face, Cooper typed with the speed of a mad scientist. Okay, I got it! He stood from his terminal and threw his hands in the air, signifying he was finished. They listened to the sound of the photon-reducing cannon. Two anxiously stared at the speedometer, hoping to see a change, desperately wanting the spacecraft to slow down. Nothing happened. Her mind became heavy with dread. The ship entered the black hole. Everything around them became distorted. Her shipmates' bodies looked all stretched out, and the walls of the ship swirled within themselves. Everything moved in slow motion. She watched the flattened drops of perspiration lift off Cooper's face and then smash and swirl into the wall beside him. Her fingers elongated like those of some gangly alien. Her head whirled forward. All went black. Viet woke up groggily. His mind snapped to attention when he noticed the extreme heat and the ship shaking like mad. Sweat oozed from his skin. He stumbled to his feet. The captain's brains lay splattered on the floor next to him. Cooper's torso rested three feet away from his legs, and his intestines were strewn along the floor. Viet gazed out the window. They were entering the atmosphere of a planet. The intense rumbling came to a halt, and the heat dissipated as the view from the window no longer showed the burning of an atmosphere, but the splendor of a living planet covered in trees and water. Fabulously gorgeous. The planet captured Viet's attention for a moment. It looked similar to Earth, but even more beautiful. Two! Viet looked around and didn't see her. The ship was going down, 
fast, he struggled to the pilot controls and managed to slow down the craft's descent a little. But too late! Fiat gripped his seat. Repeated bumps violently shook the craft as it crashed through the treetops. His body flipped over with the craft as it tumbled through the air and splashed into water. He looked at himself and saw only minor cuts and bruises. The pouring of water from all over the ship filled his ears. I've got to get out, but not without two. Please be alive, my lovely twin. Please live, girl. Fiat frantically searched from room to room. Last room to check, captain's quarters. He slammed his hands against the door and pushed hard to the side. It didn't budge. Two has to be in there. Viet searched around for a tool. He found a wrench and pried open the wiring sensors to the door. He quickly manipulated the wires. Success! The door opened. Two lay sprawled on the floor. Tears ran down Viet's face as he dove to caress his twin sister. She's warm, breathing, heart beating, alive. Oh, Lord, she's alive. Metal cracked open from somewhere in the ship and the river rushed in. Viet tossed two over his shoulder in a fireman's carry and trudged through the water, now at knee height. His muscles burned as he fought through the burden of Two's weight and the resistance of the liquid. He climbed up a ladder, twisted open the sealed exit door, and emerged from the top of the sinking craft into temperate air. Forested lands loomed high in the sky on both sides of a gently flowing river. Viet jumped into the water and dragged Two to shore. There he sat, holding his twin sister as tears trickled down his face, singing to her softly in sadness and joy, waiting, hoping for her to return to consciousness.